Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophina the Babbling Balgin, and welcome to Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. We're uh, back in a Souls game. It's been a while since we've played one of these, but uh, since I started my channel with Bloodborne originally, and I had a slot available in my planning. I thought, why not get back to one of the older Souls games? So Dark Souls 2 uh, has been released a few years ago. It's been a while by now. I think it's about six or seven years ago on uh, the last generation of consoles and PC, of course. And has been recently re-released as Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, which changed a whole lot of things, uh, mostly a bit about uh, enemy locations, etc. And also includes all of the DLC. So we're going to go through this a bit more differently than we do our normal blind playthroughs, because this of course is not going to be a blind playthrough. I've played the original Dark Souls 2 before. Um, to completion without the DLC though. So once we get to the DLC, it will be a new experience for me. But before that, we're going to be uh, kind of replaying stuff I've done before. But of course, if you're new to this game, this is going to be a very nice introduction to it. Um, I'm going to edit it a bit more than I usually do for my playthrough so we can get to the good stuff. I'm going to talk about what this makes this game tick and we're still going to go through uh, most of the details, like the story details, as we go along. The first thing I want to know from you guys is, uh, well, Dark Souls 2 is a bit infamous for being a worse Souls game than the ones, a worse Souls game than the ones before and after. And I don't really feel the same way. It's maybe a little bit worse, but that doesn't really mean much in the, the Souls games uh, because they're all pretty much uh, good games. So what are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments. Just pause this video, you can do that, it's a video. Pause this video, head down there and tell me what you think of Dark Souls 2 so we can start a discussion about that. But uh, you know what? That's all I need to say beforehand. Let's just dive right in with a new game. Perhaps you've seen it, maybe in a dream, a murky, forgotten land. Souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. So I'd like to talk about the positive notes of this game. Long ago, in a walled off land far to the north. And I do love this intro. A great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. Creepy smile. And then one of the cooler entrances into a fantasy game, I feel like. Because we have our standard prison breaks, our standard uh, dungeons where you start fantasy games. But this, this is a bit different. And I also feel like the basic premise of the story is pretty clear from the start. 
we'll get into that pretty soon but it's about uh in this case it's pretty weird because the 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 beginning scene kind of indicates that it's a man because of the the clothing etc but it's a person who uh, was branded by the dark sign the curse of the undead and lost his family because of it and he just wants to or she just wants to uh get rid of it but look at that isn't that an awesome intro cinematic a maelstrom of death kind of reminds you of mito from dark souls one like a moth drawn to a flame your wings will burn in anguish. Time after time. And of course, he starts to remember what happened. She, again, starts to remember what happened because oh, of the curse. He wants to get fate. rid of it. The fate of the cursed. Let's dive in headfirst into the giant 30. Flush toilet. Goodbye. So yeah, pretty clear I feel like what the story is, aside from the bit of magic mumbo jumbo. And then, yeah, I feel like this Dark Souls is a lot more cinematic than the other ones. Especially in Dark Souls 3, the amount of cinematics were limited. Was limited, there were only a few. But here I feel like they do take advantage to try and tell at least a semblance of a story. I feel like it's a bit more clear. So we need to get to Drang Lake to get rid, although that's not really been said specifically. But we need to get to Drang Lake to get rid of the dark sign. A uh, few differences with the other Dark Souls. First off, you can see my health bar can be diminished by dying. So now it's at 50%. Uh, and that's it. There's not much in this first area. Things betwixt. Things betwixt. It's a bit of a cool name, but I really have a hard time pronouncing that. And there's a few rats in the grass, but uh, let's head into that little shack over there first and see what we can find out over there. So, crossing a waterfall, and we get this lovely little. Well, it's not. It's kind of literally a treehouse, not the normal treehouse. Let's head in. And again, we get another cinematic. So the one we talked to before, the one we s we saw what in the, the cinematic, uh, the intro cinematic, oh is one of these women's face. sister. The face of the curse. So it's kind of indicated by the empty chair that she was supposed it's to an sit undead. there. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes, you'll become one of them. Hollows prey upon them. Feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> yeah, start giggling about it. So if you've played Dark Souls 3, you might also recognize these women. Because one of them is one of the merchants. But, of course, we know what our name is. We know who we are. Because we are Bob. In case you don't know Bob, you'll get to know him in a second. He's uh, our main character from our group therapy Dark Souls 3 playthrough. You can check that out in the comment section if you want to. Uh, it's a part of I try to get two of my friends to get to know Dark Souls and we play through the entirety of Dark Souls 3 by letting them play and uh, see if two noobs can actually play through the entire game. And you can check that out right there. But we get a human effigy. Deep into your past. And it kind of looks like a, a little bit like a person. Yes. 
It's an effigy of you. I wouldn't go that far though, but you can kind of see the dark sign forming in the middle, kind of like we saw in the cinematic, the dark uh, symbol in the back of our character. But give me a second. And here we have him, Bayou Bulb himself in his younger years, because of course Dark Souls 2 predates Dark Souls 3, so this is Bayou Bulb in his prime. If you want to see him in his older days, go check out, again, go check out our Dark Souls 3 playthrough. But this, this is going to be the lovely man that's going to help us through the entirety of Dark Souls 2. And he's actually, in his younger years, he was a bit of a bandit, so we're going with the bandit class. Uh, going for a bit more of a strength character, but we'll see where we'll end up by the end of this and we'll finalize So thank you. This is my true self All people come here for the same reason To break the curse You're no different I should think Hmm Doesn't stand a chance Well, you never know <laughs> so these are the handmaidens and one of them survives somehow and ends up in Dark Souls 3 as a merchant. But uh, yeah, these Get lovely ladies the try to help us a bit. And trot along to the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls, all of them, over and over again. <laughs> so another cool thing about Dark Souls 2 is it's actually a bit more literal than the other entries in the series. So we are cursed. If we stay cursed too long, we turn hollow and turn into one of them. We don't really know what that just means already, but there we go, self-recollection. And uh, yeah, we need to go to the kingdom. It's all just set out plain and simple. And when we get to the kingdom, we will, uh, well, we'll, on the long way, we'll lose our souls. I'm just going to head up here. We'll open this up. There's nothing useful in there outside from a uh, human effigy. Human effigies will be able to use that to get back to our true form if we die too much. Because if we die, we actually lose our maximum health bar slowly over time. So, uh, huh, I thought you got, a ladle, you got a ladle from her, but apparently not. So uh, let's just move on. We're going to talk to these ladies. I will just head through this tutorial level because uh, we don't actually need to check this out all that much. I'm going to light this bonfire so we can return here if we need to. Uh, as you can see, I don't have an Estus flask, not yet, so that means we're gonna have to make do with the life gems we've given. Life gems don't immediately heal you up, you just get a bit of healing over time once you use those. Uh, the benefit of life gems, however, is that you can actually use them to, uh, aside from Estus flask, so they're just consumable items. And you can actually move while you're uh, healing as well. So I'm just going through the tutorial area pretty quickly so we can get the items that are here. We can actually check out, I think it is here, right? Yeah. So this is the nest. Give yeah. us you. Give us so give us smooth to give us silk. So this is kind of like Sparkly the Crow in uh, Dark Souls 3. You can leave items here and get stuff in return. And I think I took something that I can actually use in return. So give me a second. I think if I go into my inventory. Inventory. There we go. I took a petrified something as my uh, starting gift. So if you check out the description there. You get an unidentified petrified object. Pleasant to the touch despite it looks. It's looks. A rare and peculiar thing to be certain, but one without a known purpose. So let's use that and leave it here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, nice, so, so nice, so smooth. Yeah, yeah. Silky smooth. So it kind of sounds like there are two crows here, actually. Although, yeah, we you, never you. see see any one of yes. those. Yes, yes, yes. Give us smooth, give us silk. So then we get the channeler's trident as one of our first drops. Uh, I think you can also drop souls here, if I'm not mistaken. So let's try that really quickly. Ah, okay. No. Okay, I was wrong. No souls then. Uh, I'm actually going to check out the channel of strident. If that's actually something I can use. I also have a bow equipped. 
not going to really use that just now. So I think, yeah, it's a dexterity weapon, as I thought. So we're not going to use that just yet. Or maybe not even. But we're going to try and experiment with a few weapons in this uh, playthrough. Let's kick the ladder down and then head through it and onto the next bit. So there's an item apparently I missed. So maybe I should actually drop down on top of that. Like this. There we go. Got that item. Another soul. And then just drop down here. So another first exciting thing. We're gonna fail horribly and try our hand at a first jump. There we go. Okay, that worked. And then we get another item from this corpse precariously dangling from the edge. And we get an amber herb. Amber herbs are for spell costs so they can actually restore uh, spell power. So an annual herb with an amber color so deep it gives the impression of luminescence. If the, it is the mistaken belief of many that the flowers of this herb do not blossom. However, small white flowers do blossom during dusk when the moon is visible. So not every item description is interesting, but we're gonna through a few gonna go through a few of these, most the the most interesting ones. So the human effigy uh, use this item to reverse hollowing, so we can reverse our zombie state if we get too close to the edge. And uh, we can see, so peer closely at an effigy and one begins to perceive a human form. But whose form it takes depends on the person looking back. So I think that actually, yeah, a warm soft, so soft is the keyword here. We can actually use that on uh, the crows as well. Okay, never mind. Let's uh, completely, okay, I thought it was soft, so apparently not. And when we get through the cave, we get into the sunlight and we get to lovely, lovely Majula. So Majula is kind of the basic hub of our travels through Dark Souls 2. And again, as in very, very nicely done Dark Souls fashion, we can see some of the places we'll be heading towards. So over there in the distance, you can see some uh, buildings stuck in the water. And then over there, you can see like a Colosseum-like thing. And yeah, anything else? I don't think we can actually see over there. No, we can just see some trees and some mountains. But, moving on, I think I can actually drop down here and get another item. I think. Might be mistaken as well. So drop down here. And then we get to this corpse. And we get the Morning Star and the Cleric's Sacred Chime. If, if I'm not mistaken, the Morning Star is actually a better weapon than what we have at the moment. Uh, as you can see, we also lose durability, the red bar underneath the weapon. Uh, we actually lose the weapon's durability. Uh, but the Morning Star is heavier, but we do get a bit of bleed damage. Ah, and I can't carry it because I don't have enough uh, strength just yet. So we'll go with the axe for now. Moving on, another corpse with the binoculars. And then we can get to the area proper. You can jump on top of here as well. Because uh, some speedrunners use this to get there quicker than you could the other way. Because you need to maneuver a bit to get there. But uh, let's talk to the most important person in here first, and that's this lovely woman over here, the Emerald Herald. Are you the next monarch? Or merely a pawn of fate? Bearer of the curse. I will remain by your side till this frail hope shatters. Take this with you. May it ease your journey. And she gives us our Estus Flask. Go on and see the king. He who made Drangleic what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrin. Okay, and there we go. You can may, may level up by the power of the Emerald Herald. So she uh, just has the role of the Firekeeper. But she's a bit more of an interesting character. Uh, we'll get back to her a few times along this playthrough and uh because there's more to her than meets the eye but let's talk to her again Bearer of the curse seek misery for misery will lead you to greater stronger souls so again pretty little you will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid we need to get stronger to get to the king and King Vendrick is the man who was responsible for this entire place. So now we can see that large dark tower in the background as well. Uh, which is something we'll be heading to very later on. But uh, let's continue talking. Seek those whose names are unutterable. The four endowed with immense souls. Their souls will serve as beacons. Once you have found them, 
return here to me, so that hope will not fade away. So there we go, pretty clear objective. We need to find the four people of, or creatures that have the most, uh, well, the biggest souls and get their souls to the Emerald Herald. So pretty basic, get stronger so we can get to the larger souls, get stronger again so we don't grow hollow and uh, save this land. So pretty simple, uh, straightforward. Uh, we can upgrade our Estus Flask with her, but we can't do that just that. So let's just level up. This is the only time I'm going to show you this menu. Uh, we need a bit more souls to do so, but we're going to head into the strength attribute a bit further later on because we have a nice start with dexterity. And then adaptability is also going to be something interesting. So Dark Souls 2 is different in calculating your invincibility frames during rolling. Uh, so during dodging, so you can actually see that. So raises various attributes to ensure one's survival, boosts agility and various resistances. So it's kind of a defense stat, but it also increases the amount of invincibility frames you get uh, when rolling. So rolling uh, is our way to avoid damage, and adaptability will allow us to be a bit more invincible during rolling. So our invincibility frame takes a bit longer. So this is the last time you'll see this. I'm not going to bore you with this any more after this. You're undead, aren't you? You have that distinct scent, the smell of irreversible fate. This is Majula. It is a kind of settlement. A place where life is almost normal. And in Drang Lake these days, there are very few places like that. I am Solden. And like you, I lost everything. And now I'm here. You probably heard that it was possible to break the curse here. Well, that's not true at all. There's nothing here for you, me. Anybody. So there we go, our first indication that there might not be even a cure. And I was talking about how this game is pretty literal with everything. Um, this guy is kind of the, the successor to the Crestfallen Warrior of Dark Souls 1 and 3 actually as well. And his name is Solden. I mean, he's literally done. His soul is done. He is done with everything. He doesn't care about anything anymore. So his name is literally Sol. Done. Let's have a little chat with him pretty but I'm first going to boost the audio of the voices because I feel like it's a bit low. Okay, let's try that out. Do you know much about souls? That's better. Even I'm not certain, but... I'm told that the soul is the essence of life itself. Anything living, sentient or no, supposedly has one. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive, to walk this earth, that's the real curse right there. We undead will never die. And that's quite a predicament, really. So... One of the things I want to talk about, of course, as I said before, is the complaints that people have with this game. One of them is actually that this game is not as interconnected as the first Dark Souls. So in the first Dark Souls, you could see perfectly where you were going. Uh, well, if you knew the level that was, uh, which is kind of part of my commentary here. So you could see where you were going and that was cool in hindsight but at first glance you didn't know you could go wherever you want to go this game is kind of the same you have that big tower over there you have those buildings over there and then we have that building over there so kind of we see where we could be going later on there's a few instances where the transition is a bit weird but i feel like dark souls 1 had similar transitions and we'll talk about those once we get to them. So let's continue our tour of Majula. So next building is this little shack with a man with his head in his hands. Well, he's kind of waiting for something. So let's have a little chat with him. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just help me open this door. I packed my tools in here, seeing it was vacant. 
But now somebody's gone and locked the door. So, this man is a blacksmith. He left his tools in there. Simple as that. Because uh, he thought the lot was vacant. But then probably the real owner of the building uh, came and locked the door while his tools were still in there. It's a bit of a funny gag. Because, of course, you could just climb through the completely wrecked window. And just get the tools that way. And maybe even open up from the inside. But, uh, yeah, we'll have a little chat with him later on once we're able to open up his door. Moving on. Up here on the right is actually another pretty cool game mechanic. You can check this out immediately from the start. And it's a bit of a bit of a dangerous thing to check out. Because if you activate the shrine, you can actually make the game a lot harder. So if you check that out, you get the Victor Stone. And it's a covenant you can join. So a kind of a, a clan for this game. You can join this covenant and offer all stones. But if you join the covenant, you actually make the game harder. You deal less damage and you receive more damage so not something we need want to do in a game as hard as this one but we do get five homeward bones so those are kind of the uh, escape ropes similar to the escape ropes from pokemon i like to always use that comparison and you can use those to just head back to the last bonfire you rested at then the next track over is home to one of the more colorful characters of dark souls 2 and i must say one of the cooler characters in the entire game if she's ah there she is hello shalquar oh. Undead, are we? And one without much time remaining. Just about ready to fall apart, I'd say. Not exactly the time to be chatting with a cat. <laughs> no, it isn't, but I love her voice actress. <laughs> well, suit yourself. Oh yes, you may call me Shalqua. Enchante. So, what did you want anyway? So, Shalquar oh, smell wonderful. <laughs> is a bit of a nasty cat, so she likes to laugh at us. But we can actually buy items from sweet, sweet Shalquar. And most of her items are pretty useful. So you have the Ring of the Evil Eye, absorb HP from each defeated foe. The Silver Cat Ring, which reduces damage from falling, which we'll need later on. Then the Red Eye Ring, which us, makes us easier to be detected by enemies. The Name Engraved Ring, which makes it easier to connect to players who chose the same gold, so the same covenant. And then the Ring of Whispers, you can hear the voices of foes. And this is also an interesting ring because it allows you to talk to certain enemies. So uh, useful for locating hidden enemies and perhaps for a few other things as well. So you can use this ring to talk to certain characters which you might not be able to talk to otherwise. This place is already dead. Everything will crumble and waste away so that something new may be born. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> and she has a really uh, optimistic view of the world, I like to talk that. This place is fascinating. We receive only the most peculiar visitors. Folk like yourself. It's enough to keep even a cat amused. <laughs> so as you might have noticed, Shalquar is probably the most sarcastic cat around, so... She makes it out to be like this place is a bustling metropolis. Are you going to see the old ones? But it surely isn't, because everything is decrepit in here. grown so incredibly ancient. They must have sprouted quite a thick coat of moss by now. For heaven's sake. No one even knows their names anymore. So no one even know, knows that. their names anymore. <laughs> so that's why nobody here... It's kind of an explanation yes. why nobody here... Nothing like yourself. ...can't give us a bit more explanation about who you we need to take out. You have a pleasant scent. It grows nicer with each passing day. <laughs> so again, very sarcastic because she's talking about the fact that we're decaying. We're already dead, so with each passing day we start to smell more. Have you made friends with the man by the sea? He's lost everything. Absolutely everything. <laughs> the only thing he's good for now is a few tidbits on covenants. Covenants are a type of, well, contract, you might say. You give something to gain something. That's the way humans like it, right? It might be just the thing you need. But what does a cat know? 
So there we go, Shao Guar. I think my favorite character from Dark Souls 2. I know it's a bit soon to be talking about that. But I mean, who doesn't love a sarcastic cat? Especially with that voice. She kind of sounds a bit... Uh, well, she sounds like a lovely woman. Um, another very important item we need is this thing. We need to hit this rock. And then we get a corpse. But that corpse has a very interesting item. Because she... Uh, well, he... He, probably. He has an Estus Flask shard. We can use that to upgrade our Estus Flask. Obviously. And there we have the more annoying enemies of this game, especially in the beginning. These guys are just here to fuck your day. So these little pigs can actually wreck your day and they're gonna follow you around Majula the entire time. So they have an immense amount of health and they can actually pack a punch. So... And there we go, the last pig down. They also don't give a lot of souls, I think it's about 20. Uh, but they do give you a chance uh, to get cracked right out. Oops, really early you can use those to invade other players. But uh, that's pretty much it for that. Next up is this shack. And in this one we meet another very colorful character. And I do, I must say, I really love the characters in this game. Uh, oh, oh hello there. Because they're really varied. Well, welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morlin. And I, well, I sell armor. Oh, sorry, I... Please do have a look at my wares. I could really use the business. If you'd be so kind. Of course we will, my good man. Mold in the armor. So you have shields in here. You have armor in here, as the man just told us. So, uh... We're not gonna just use that just yet. But, uh, we're gonna check his inventory yeah, out later on. I, I do hope I see you again. We will, we will. So Mullen is a bit of a shy man because he comes from a faraway land and uh, doesn't really know what to do here. He came here and then tried to settle down, but nobody came along. So uh, he's kind of fucked at the moment. So let's open his chest and raid his armory. And we get a Titanite shard. So Titanite shards, if you don't know, are the upgrade materials for our weapons. We don't really have a decision made yet about which weapon we're going to use. So we're not going to use those just yet. And now we have that big house over there. We can't just open up that yet. Uh, so let's talk about our options here. So first option is this big hole over here. If we have the cat ring, we can actually start going down this hole into uh, a pretty large area down below. But as soon as we don't have that cat ring just yet, we don't have that option. We can go over there, which eventually leads down underneath the ocean towards those buildings in the, in the sea we saw in the distance. And now we have this uh, lower path over here, which we kind of glanced past before. And we can uh, go there first, which is exactly what we're going to do. But first up, I'm going to do some micromanaging, so give me a second. So another interesting thing to note, once you level up, she actually pulls out a wand. So it's not like she has an innate ability to level us up. She actually uses magic to do so. Now we can use the Estus Flask Shard to upgrade our Estus Flask, which I also have equipped in the meantime. So that means we can now switch to our Estus Flask. And we have two charges for that. So that makes Dark Souls 2 a bit harder at the beginning. Because you only have two charges. Just quickly sit down. And then we can head towards that tunnel over there. So going down we kind of saw a castle in this direction in the distance. So that's exactly where we're heading towards. But first of course let's open up a few more chests. And find out what's inside of here. Just a rusted, a simple rusted coin. So moving on. So, this tunnel eventually leads up into this little cavern, which we can simply navigate by going around. Uh, there's another hallway over here, but we're first going to go down and get this item over here. If I don't accidentally kill myself, that is. There we go. That's a nice introduction to uh, the dead screen. We took, took us an hour. So, if you were wondering if uh, Shalkwar's comments were actually correct, now that we died once, we actually changed a bit. So we kind of look a bit more zombie-like now. So we uh, we start losing bits of flesh. I do want my uh, my souls back here. Uh, I'm actually gonna try this properly this time. Slowly. There we go. And open this up. And it's a bit silly because the further end of this uh, rock actually is uh, crossable, but I did want that human effigy. So if we just go here, we can actually jump across and get towards this little cliffside. And get another homeward bone and another soul. And then we get to this uh, side bit. 
because uh, I think that stack is actually ends up in the set. Oh, I think that guy is new. I don't think that guy was in the original version. Did he see me? Looked like he saw me. Are we gonna try and fight this thing? I guess we are. Oh, oh! Ow, ow. There we go. There we go. So there's a few more enemies than there were in the original version. So I think this is the the, the normal staircase you should take. Hello, buddy. And all his ass. And now we need to do our first acid flask already. So again, I have really low adaptability. So my invincibility during rolling is pretty much nothing. Okay. Never mind, I don't think I'm gonna beat this thing. Okay, okay, let's just run away. I got it. There we go. So I have the big guy. I'm just gonna activate the first bonfire here. Before we get uh, destroyed at the start. So as uh, you might realize if you've played Dark Souls before. Most of these games play a bit differently every time. So I'm kind of used to the controls of Dark Souls 3. And the invincibility you get during uh, rolling there. And I don't have that here. So yes, I'm making excuses for myself. But uh, I feel like it's kind of justified. So moving on. So I feel like they've upgraded the enemy count a bit. Because I went through about six soldiers before I even got to this first uh, ladder over here. But there's another item here in the corner that I want to get before we move on. There we go. And I think it might actually be... No. Okay, he woke up already. Great. Another soul. The more we can gather those, the better. And let's head up that ladder over here inside of a tree so i mean who doesn't like the level design here what's wrong with the level design one of the first things you do is climb a ladder inside of a tree because yeah this is one big tree uh again there's a lot of enemies here so we're gonna try and slowly work our way through this and i'll see you guys in a second after all of these well fake corpses turn into real corpses So, after a lot of slashing and killing soldiers, we cleared out most of this area. I think I killed... Yeah, they, uh, probably this doesn't look a lot different than it was five seconds ago for you guys, but trust me, I killed a lot of dudes. And then we get this hilarious situation on the ladder. And there we go, take him out right here, and now we can climb up safely up the ladder. And there we go, took out the bigger soldier with the fire bombs, and then we can try and jump across there. Another thing I, a thing I like about Dark Souls 2 is I kind of feel like the, the jumping is a lot better than in the previous game. And now I'm going to jump right next to it. Yeah, I was, I was ex totally expecting me to jump next to it, just to prove my point. Uh, so that was that item I needed there, and then we're going to go back down again through the fog gate. So the first thing I noticed that changed compared to the original Dark Souls 2 is that there was a white knight instead of this corpse here. So I'm wondering what they're going to do with those knights then. I feel like that changed a bit. So let's head into the mist. As you can see, weapon degradation is a big problem because I'm already at half of my weapon durability. Uh, which is uh, going to be a problem. If I break my axe, I'm not going to have anything to defend myself with. So there's this guy. Stop them in his tracks, and I must avoid striking the walls as well, because that reduces my durability even further. And I think there's a few guys in here. Oh god, that was a mess. And heavy. And there we go. Take out two guys at once. Like a badass, because Bob is in his prime here. I think, wasn't there another one here? Yeah, there it is. There he is. And there he goes, so as you can see, the second strike of this weapon uh, deals out a lot more damage. That was crossbow bolts. So it's sometimes wiser to go into a combo if you want to deal that just a bit more damage. Okay, he just turned around really quickly there. Oh god, he hit me there actually. Just gonna drink up right in front of his face. He has a big sword. I want that sword. Can you give me that sword? I like swords. Foot soldier sword, there we go, asking you shall receive. It is a worse sword, a lot worse actually. And we found a few broken straight swords as well and there's something really, really creepy whispering in my ear. 
And yeah, I don't think we have anything that has the damage we want at the moment. So yeah, let's go with the axe a bit more, a bit further, because I think we're pretty close to a bonfire. So let's pick up this. We can hear really, really scary noises in the background. So another firebomb chucker. Oh, he did that really close. And there we go. I rolled perfectly there, but I still took damage because my adaptability is so low. So I'm definitely going to have to do something about that. Wait, where did that come from? Oh, what the? Oh, hello there. You're an asshole. So moving up over here. I'm going to drink just for safety. I kind of know where everything is. But as you can see, we have arrived at the big building, the big castle we could see from the distance. But I think, yeah, there's one more guy over here. He's going to get a heavy strike in the face. And then just finish him off with a horizontal swipe. And we get a witching urn, which is kind of a throwable, but with magic instead of like a Molotov cocktail. So, fancy door. Let's open that up. And get our zombie ass in here. So yeah, our axe is almost completely gone. But luckily there's a bonfire here. Like that. And take a little rest at that one. There we go. First things first, there's a lovely lady sitting here. So let's have a little chat with her. Don't look at her hands, they're perfectly normal. She just didn't clip her fingers lately. Well, uh, lovely woman, I am Bob, and I'm here to rescue you. I don't know why you were laughing so creepily. Merchant Hag Melentia. So she sells a few basic weapons like the, the Cestus and the club, and of course the hand axe we're using at the moment. Uh, and she also sells the traveling merchant armor. But more interesting, she has a few key items, and a few of these we actually want. So the fragrant branch of your... Uh, is used to restore living things from petrification. So we found one corpse already. Well, one guy that was petrified already. Um, extend inhalation. Extended inhalation of the branches scent can lead to coughing and nausea. So please don't do that. Uh, but the more interesting thing is this one. Lanagrast's key opens blacksmith Lanagrast's shop in Majula. So uh, it's comprised of abandoned old houses, one of which Lanagrast has fashioned into a shop. So let's buy that with a thousand souls. So that allows us to uh, just enable the blacksmith. Which also indicates that she is actually the one that was the previous owner of that house and she just left and locked up her own place. My name is Melentia. You're a stranger to this land. Oh, we get as strangers these days. Everybody's going and run off. <laughs> Drang Lake's been a pile of rubble since the war, thought long, long ago. When the giants crossed the sea. Okay, when the giants crossed the sea, that's the first indication we get from uh, something like giants existing. It like the battles would never end. Poor folk like myself have nary a place to sleep. That's why I keep all me things right with me. You may travel light, but me thinks you bear a burden of your own. <laughs> so she's talking about us losing our family, of course, as we saw in the, uh, the intro. And again, this game is very literal, so we heard her talk about giants crossing the sea and then about the battles going on and on. And that's why she keeps her things with her, because she doesn't want to lose them when battle breaks out. So that's why she also just left the house empty and why the ha house, her house actually seemed so empty and she just keeps everything with her. You're, you're, you're welcome. Stop laughing so creepily. Uh, another thing I want to check out here is the upper level. Because there's actually a door here, which uh, seems locked at first. So if you want to try and open it, it's locked. But you can actually smash this to pieces. There we go. And then there's one of our fateful crystal lizards around here. I'm trying to kill it, but apparently it's not letting me. Okay, it's going to have to wait until later. Let's pick this up. Another hand axe and a radiant life gem. So a life gem that takes a bit more out of everything. So Radiant Life Gem just gives you more health in total. And then I think it's a bit dark in here. I think there's a hole in the floor here somewhere. Aha, so there's another door here which we can open. And that leads into a room with a hole in the floor. And don't know why that... Okay. 
There we go. Let's take this guy out. I feel like I'm, I'm fully handy with the hand axe. No pun intended. But uh, we should keep with that for the moment. And we did lose... We lose a lot of durability with that thing. Uh, so there are more. There we go. More radiant life gems. And then we can drop onto this branch if I can position myself correctly. And we get another interesting item. Especially in connection with the rest of Dark Souls. We get a divine blessing. If you check that out... Has a pretty interesting description. So holy water endowed with a divine blessing. Water blessed by an ancient goddess. Her name is long forgotten and the magic academy of Melfia denies even her existence. In any age, there are those who refuse to see reason. It is their meddling that distorts the truth. So if you've played Dark Souls 1, you know that this divine blessing was created, well, blessed by Guinevere. So the big... Uh, well, she's not actually big, but uh, a very, very lovely lady from Dark Souls 1. And since a lot of time has passed, this is now known. she's now known by as an ancient goddess. Since there has been a lot of time that's passed, it's also, well, obvious that her name has been long forgotten. Because information gets lost in the ages. And there we go. Just gonna rest again, and then we'll move forward. So there's actually two ways we can go. Uh, actually three ways. I'm going to show you the two obvious ones first. You can actually drop down here. It looks like I missed an item over there. You can start to drop down. Oh, hey, yeah, forgot about that guy. You can drop down here. Uh, where this guy is going to fall down in a second. Oh, he just flopped up. There we go. Hollow soldier leggings. You can drop down there and go through that area. Then you have this ladder in here. Which we can go down to. And then there's a secret area. You can see by the notes already. I think... Um, if you hit this wall... Or not? Doesn't that work? I thought that was going to work. No. Okay, I, th I think there's a way to trigger that from the other side of the wall. Because that wall is destructible, actually. But we're going to go down this ladder first. Because I uh, just want to open up a few things. So let's go down the ladder first. And start looking at this place. So this place is on fire for some reason. Uh, again, one of those transitions you think might not make a lot of sense, but uh, well, this this the ruler of this uh, castle just uh, kept fire breathing lizards down there. Look at those lovely! Oh God! There's a guy with a halberd. I'm just gonna whack his head. Oh, yeah! I'm not gonna risk going too close to the edge there. There we go. Taken down. So yeah, you can see those uh, fire-breathing lizards down there. So there's actually a way you can roll down and land on top of one of those. To, uh, yeah, I've seen a few speedruns of this game. It's really impressive every time. But uh, I'm not a speedrunner, so I'm going to stay close here. Okay. Dodge that one. Oh, yeah. Kind of traded blows there. So let's pick up more gauntlets. So I'm going to check out in a second if we can't change armor sets already. Because that hollow armor set is a... Uh, Rather cool, but this door is locked. So we need to cross the bridge again. Another door that's locked, but we have this fog gate over there. So let's go through here. And now we're pretty much where that... Well, it's a bit higher up, but that archer was over here. Um, so let's go up first. So again, there's another area down here you can check out. But we're going to skip that for now and check that out later. So let's just head up here. And see what we're dealing with behind us here. Because we're at a kind of ramparts. Kind of reminiscent of the first level of Demon Souls actually. And ooh. That is new. That is definitely new. There wasn't one of those guys here. So let's just... Oh god. There we go. So that's one of the turtle guys. Didn't really want to fight those. Uh, so these guys are actually here to force you to... Battle enemies head on because they have a shell in the back. Oh wow, he just tossed me across the, the room. Get up, get up, just gonna heal up. Oh god, oh wow, they made these guys a bit more sturdy. So, heavy attack is bad because he. There we go, because he can actually hit me back rather quickly. I didn't expect that. I do want to get his armor because I want to attack out Bob with a bit of fancy armor before we move along. So, now we have uh, another one over here. Did I just see? Yeah, there he is. So that's the archer that tried to hit us when we were at the other side. There we go. And now we have that guy over there. I want to keep him alive because he can actually help us out a bit. 
So if we go over here. Okay, that was a miss apparently. Oh god. Just gonna kill that guy first. He missed me. Okay, so there's that guy. Wanna just trick him into throwing a firebomb over here. Okay, that was almost, almost correct. Oh god. Yeah, it hit me there. So yeah, he didn't. He, he doesn't care apparently. I want to unlock that shortcut before we move on. Yeah, there we go. And I died. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah, and then out of the blue, across the wall, he just tossed that right into my face. Okay, never mind. We opened up the wall. Just uh, get one up there with the death counter. So, we opened that up, which is good, because that means, it means we can just head through here. I want to touch my bloodstain. There we go. There we go. So to end the episode, I actually want to do something uh, cool uh, and show you this. So if you go up this ladder and look up, there's an eagle flying overhead with a giant, giant knight. I mean, he's not gonna, he's not gonna do it. Oh, he's circling back. Yeah, he is. And there we have, hey, hey, this thing, this thing. Yeah, he's gonna kick my ass. And he has a very large health bar. A very large health bar. So, uh, yeah, we're not gonna kill this guy. I'm not gonna kill this guy now, but uh, as you can see... That actually hit me. There we go, we're down. So this is the only time you can actually trigger this fight. Because uh, this is one of the boss fights. And I just wanted to end on a boss fight, because the plan for this series is to end... Uh, every episode with at least one boss fight. Uh, so this is gonna be quite a big episode, but uh, it should be fine. I think I'm just gonna have edited... Yeah, I'll just cut that. So yeah, every episode will end with a boss fight, but because it takes a while to get to this point in the game, I'm just gonna end this episode here, and from the next episode on, we'll, we'll do a boss fight every single time, just to keep you guys interested, of course. So, uh, with that done, I'd like to at uh, Bio Bob to give you guys lots of thanks for watching him and uh, if you liked the series don't forget to like it right here on YouTube like this video right here on YouTube and uh, when we get back we're gonna go further through this undead burg and if you like more of this you want to see more of this I've done a Dark Souls 3 playthrough of my own and we did a Dark Souls 3 playthrough as I said in the beginning of this uh, episode with two of my friends, Christoph and Benito, and we went through the entire game together uh, without too much help from me. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Dark Souls 2, The Scholar of the First Sin. Goodbye!